What about in like native grass, native perennial grasses that are in a fallow situation? You often see if the butts aren't broken down. Not for net wash is not an issue. Issue for crown rot. Crown rot, yep. yeah. Yeah, right. <coughs> Okay, then the spots actually got to be right. So again, remember, so if you can take nothing away, the yellow is toxin, necrotroph killing cells, yellow toxin, then dying in behind it. They elongate, they get bigger, they keep producing toxin in advance of where they're going to feed next. What should use this one? Then they get bigger. Okay, then they start to elongate, but they're still producing toxin yellow in advance of where they, they want to feed next. And they end up joining up, but you've still got that yellow. So it's tight yellow around it, not general yellowing of the whole Here's what it looked like. These are all things that have been set in over the last year called yellow spot. I don't know how they got yellow spot out of that, but anyway. That was a contact herbicide. <laughs> These others were actually phytotoxicity for herbicides. Um, so yeah, so have you got that tight yellow margin? It doesn't cause general yellowing. The other one, Chris is fortunate enough, so you can pass these around too. You can do that, mate. You can, mess, you can be responsible for messing up the, the ground. First thing I do when I get one is I pull just a single tiller off. I better be careful I do this right. You never... I try to always just look at a, a single tiller. So if it's yellow spot, there's going to be a clear distribution. Remember, it's coming off stubble, those initial infection, those spores, only going one centimetre. So what you'll see in distribution is you'll always have more on the lowest leaf, less on the next leaf up, and even fewer on the, the one up from there. Okay, because it's coming from below ground. The other thing you'll see um, clearly, this is great pictures. The other thing you'll see is you tend to have a random distribution of all the leaf. Okay, so where the infection is just where a spores land on the leaf, got the moisture requirement, and infected. Okay, you don't get it concentrating. So something like this, where you're getting concentration of the symptoms towards the leaf, is not characteristic of a disease because there's no reason a spore wants to wants to move anything. The other one we run into every year is uh, Gregory's one that do it. You get this leaf tipping around that flowering stage onwards. And I've heard this called yellow spot before. Nothing to do with it. It's actually called leaf tip necrosis. It's just a function of having particular leaf rust gene and stripe rust gene combination. It's just physiological. Nothing to do. Nothing you can do about it. It's just a function of having that durable resistance. Called tan spot, everyone else. So hopefully you, you start thinking more of tan. That dead tissue does not cause general yellowing of leaves. What does tend to cause general yellowing of leaves? Herbicide phytotoxicity and certainly interaction with frost. We saw a lot of this last year. Okay, sprays that went on, they got a frost event. When you put a herbicide on, your crop still has to deal with that that chemical. It has to metabolise that chemical. If you have a frost event, it slows its metabolism. It can't get rid of us as quick. It moves to the tip and can cause that yellowing, that phytotoxicity. And I don't know about you guys, but when we get back over Liverpool Plains, which is high input, um, sometimes in some of their sprays, uh, water's the lowest actual constituent. <laughs> we even had people with nitrogen deficiency trying to cause yellow spot. Nitrogen's got a, a clear distribution as well. The plant wants to reproduce, so it'll, if it's running out of end, it'll move it out of the lowest leaves and preferentially keep putting it to the new leaves. And you'll see that. So the lowest leaf will go, go a light green, then go yellow and die off, and they'll then uh, yellow off from the, the next leaf up. Remember, repeated rain events is what drives yellow spot. So really, it's a function of wet years. And this is the photo I like to put up at the end of the thing. So yes, there's yellow spot here. We can see clear yellow margins, dead leaf in behind it. Yep, more than one thing. Not often you only have one thing going on in a crop. We've got end deficiency going on here. And what they're finding with a lot of their work, this is out of WA, a lot of work in WA, they get a lot better efficacy out of their fungicide if they put some nitrogen on at the same time. Because I think you think the nitrogen's correcting this, whereas the fungicide's really just preventing that bit. We happy with yellow spot? So if you're going to yellow spot and crown rot, I should say. If nitrogen was to go on with it, are you better off using a liquid one that you can put on? With the fungicide, if you were going to go down that path, or well, you do. The, well, you limit by how much you can put on in that application. But yeah. Yeah, would that be enough to help uptake it though? With, like, oh, it's not an uptake. It's just actually keeping the, the leaf green. Yeah, okay. So if you got, so it's actually there's, there's no, um, yeah, no indication that they're actually synergistic. 
It's just one's correcting one problem, the other's correcting another. So it's the nitrogen's correcting a problem which I think is getting misdiagnosed as yellow spot. Another one, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, cereal, uh, cereal yellow spot. Yeah. Barley yellow dwarf virus? Yeah, yeah, cereal, yeah, cereal. Cereal. yeah it's, I, everyone said barley, but I got it in white, so last year. And, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't get caught on that. Yeah. So yeah, look, it'll, it'll, so there is two. So there's barley yellow dwarf virus and cereal yellow dwarf virus. Yeah. They're basically brothers. Like, they're exactly the same thing. They're just a different name. So you, yeah. you can't, in terms of symptoms, other things, you can't differentiate them. No. All they are is um, uh, slightly different in terms of um, genetically. So you can pick them if you've got a molecular lab. And they, I can't, you hopefully, I, I don't, sorry to wait really hard. They do have a different, tend to have a different um, aphid that, that transmits them. Yeah. So aid aphid, but barley yellow dwarf virus is mainly aid aphid. Yeah. So I think the um, the cereal aid, I can't remember what species, but it tends to be a different one. Yeah, no, no, um, never seen but it before. Exactly the same thing, yeah. So the, the, the symptoms are pretty much the, the same. So, um, and it's really early infections with the virus are the issue. So going into that, that uh, winter period, if you get infected before that, you, that's where you get the issues with reducing biomass, so that's where the dwarfing comes in, and then you get florid sterility as well, which will knock you yield. Yeah, Whereas you can prevent your infections early, and, and you don't get infected till late in the season into spring, what you find is the actual sap production, so it's a sap on virus, the actual production of the leaf outstrips the rate of the replication of the virus, and you don't get that stunting, and the, and the leaf symptoms are. So what kind of management? Aphids, it's all about aphids. So you can't control virus, yep. you can only control the vector. That vector right. is the aphid. Yeah. So, so that's where a metacloprid um, early on can, can you do protection uh, from those early infections or uh, a program spray, but certainly monitoring of aphids around them. Yeah, it was just a perfect autumn kind of thing for them, I did. Yeah. And yeah, it was mainly where we had a lot of um, like granule grasses close yeah, to the yeah. paddocks and I'll get yeah. that kind of prior than that. So, yeah. Yeah. And you tend to see them in, um, they start off in, in patches. So when you get you get winged aphids come in and then they give when they reproduce they produce wingless progeny. So they overpopulate that plant, they walk to the next plant and keep them in the yes. seed. Yeah, so wherever the winged one land, you just start it. It starts a colony and then it can start yeah, yeah, spring from there. Yeah, you know, just try and smash all the insects and mm -hmm. hope for the best. Yeah. That's all we can do, is it? And we tend to have a bigger issue in um, up on the tablelands in oats. I actually get a reddening of the leaf. The, the, the thing I look for with barley yellow is that you tend, not on every leaf, but you tend to see the run down the margins of the leaf uh, quicker. So when you get a, get a leaf, you'll, you'll get the yellowing in, so you get yellowing in wheat and barley, you get reddenings only in oats, and you'll see it run down the edge of the leaf quicker, and you get a sort of inverted arrow of green back up up the middle. Yeah, I've got a photo here. Oh, yeah, all right. That's what you think it is. Yeah, is that what it is? Will the player? <laughs> There's a couple there, you can flip from the other way. That thing that I think that's more. Yeah, Don't flip the wrong way, I'm pulling it. No, you're you're pulling it. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I don't think so. So they look more like um, some frost symptoms with the, the folding of the leaves, etc. Yeah, well, they've got diagnosed with that anyway. So. Oh, so they send it off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they've a couple of drama scraps and samples and send it off. Oh, so, yeah, they, they come back and they said that that's what it was. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's just to nuke everything. <laughs> that's about what they said. Well, we'll go into that in a sec. I'll push through this. Septoria, just be aware. So they're not an issue around this area. Um, they have, are having issues. And issues are being driven by fungicide resistance. Okay, in terms of fungicide resistance in fungal pathogens, powdery mildew is the one that's going to do it first. Septoria is going to be second. Yellow spot, probably way down the track. And rust, no evidence of ever getting fungicide resistance in rust probably. Okay, this is what's driving new fungicide development in Europe, is septoria resistance. So it ain't actually a good thing. Okay, we want to stick with the cheap trials I was using as long as we can. Okay, if you do see anything that looks like that, then yeah, certainly get it identified. Netwatch, so we went into this, so everything I said for yellow spot is pretty much relevant to this, just a different species. We've got the spot form and the net form um, of, of Netwatch. We tend to have issues with the spot form. 
Just quickly, not promoting products, but if this is something, so it's a barley on barley, Nick Poole, it's said to follow. Looking here at um, two, half a litre, two sprays, one at 31, one at 49, which is on peak. You can see uh, untreated here, so he's losing 30% uh, to spot ball, where he's got the two sprays, he's keeping it down here. This is Steve, this is a new product out of BASF. Seed treatment is doing equivalent, quite effective. Okay, that's what's really driving it. And certainly they've measured, this is Nick Poole's stuff, measured through a, a yield benefit. So, use of a seed treatment at sowing is given about the same as a two spray strategy for Netwatch. Very good Netwatch product, it does absolutely nothing for Yellow Spot. I don't know why, but I think it's got to be a bit If you were to mention the product, would you talk about seed treatment? What's the best treatment? For, depends what you want to do. Well, for the netwatch. Yeah, the barley. Not for barley, then the current, besides that Sestiva, your products there for Netwatch at the moment are only a seed disinfection. They don't actually protect against what's coming off site. They're only protecting against seaborne infection, which is only with the netball. So they're not actually doing anything after that. And there's products that have got, um, so it's where really they want some aminoclopridine in there as well. Where the, the, the main reason some of the barley ones are there is, is more for early powdery milk, powdery milk control. Exactly the same with Netwatch, tick the boxes. So you've got to be barley stubble visible in paddocks. How often we got barley back on barley? Where we tend to put barley? You do? Most people put putting barley after wheat. Got to see the fruiting structures and guess the lesions are going to look right again. And that's exactly the same thing with the distribution, more on the lowers as you go up. Just want to point out that anyone looked at Granger? No one's playing with Granger? No? You can get physiological spotting. So Granger's one we saw a lot the last two years. Gets these spots on it, looks like everything, all money, it's got to be a disease. It's actually just a physiological spot, so it's related to particular genes in here reacting to low light conditions. It's not a disease. A lot of spraying went on in Granger, this is a high yielding variety, uh, high yield environments. A lot of spraying went on last year, this is a direct break from a, a grower. Um, although he didn't actually say it, it's, you can fill that in. And that's just what it looks like. So, the problem with barley is whenever it gets a stress, they go and produce brown spots. Um, it's actually knowing that it's not just physiological. Another big one we're seeing is barley on wheat stubble. Still getting these yellow, this is my photo since I was good, getting some yellow margins, these brown spots. All the money looks like spot form on that one. When you actually do the humid chamber on it, you get canidia produced sparsely. It's actually the yellow spot fungus. So, this is the canidia, the yellow spot fungus. What's happening on barley or wheat stubble is that the yellow spot fungus can't tell whether it's a barley leaf or a wheat leaf, it's not that smart, thankfully. That lands and infects, the barley is actually resistant, gets infection of some cells and then it kills it off. They don't ever elongate and they tend not to produce a hell of a lot more spores, so it's quite hard to get the spore out. So it is, yellow spot fungus can infect barley leaves in that situation. Spots are sparse, they don't elongate and certainly haven't shown any benefit from fungicides. It's not taken out enough green leaf area to, to come from you. So it stays confined to the lower county. It doesn't progress up. This was from last year. You probably see it. There was a lot of yellowing around in barley tipping. You see that around this region. Trial at Condo. First, uh, sorry, first same time here, second same time, range of varieties. So it was quite, um, quite interactive with the time of sowing. And you can see some varieties took it a lot worse than others. Okay, and what it come back to was herbicide ap application in relation to frost event. So herbicide went on and got a frost that night. What's the variety on the left then? Oh God, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can look it up for you. So certainly see it concentrating, so phytotoxicity, try to can't metabolise it quick enough, concentrate into the leaf. You can see here, you get the brown spots and you know, so not characteristic of disease with the distribution. The other one we've seen this year, uh, just up around Narrabri, is frost damage. So getting droplets forming overnight, then getting a frost event, the droplets freeze, and getting these white uh, spots uh, forming on the leaves. So this was in wheat and barley, and quite widespread around that Narrabri area. So the big concern was, well, this is going to be some disease, what are we going to spray it with? Uh, it wasn't, it was just frost. 
and it's, it's certainly grown out of it. Happy to finish with cereals. Do we want to do canola? I feel like they're going forever. Canola? So this is this is basically I don't work on canola. So what I know about canola disease I've learned in the last uh, week. Um, and certainly if we get detailed questions we'll have to go to Kurt. So this is his presentation he's kind enough to give me, uh, provide me with from uh, 2015 JDC updates. So the main, main disease in, in canola is blackleg, is the one we worry about. Um, certainly reading up on it uh, a bit more last night even. In terms of the big, the big thing, you can get leaf lesions here and you get the pycnidia form of the leaves. It's really when we get the stem cankers is what then damages the inside tissue and affects our yield. Okay, if we can prevent early infections up to that five leaf stage, then you won't get stem cankers. So it's all about early protection. So if you get leaf lesions after that, they tend not to go into the stem canker and you don't get the, the dramatic yield loss. Then you're just looking at loss of photosynthetic area. Okay, and you, this will come out wide. Can be seed borne, so can get on the pods, you can introduce it through seed, but main is stubble. And these spores can blow, you know, 100, 100 metres, a couple hundred metres. This is why I talk about a, a separation between crops. Same with this one, tend to get the ascus spores released 90% in the first year. It depends on the maturity of those with moisture, you can get uh, longer, longer survival, longer release. So really cutting them open uh, late in the season, it shows you a little damage, no damage. It's once you get above this 50% uh, tissue damage, you're actually getting yield loss, significant yield loss. Okay, so quite often you assess the damage the previous year uh, to see what, what's going on in your farm. The other thing that complicates blackmail, fortunately we don't have most of the things I work on, you've got different resistance groups. So the fungus is actually evolving, it develops and it takes out different uh, resistance genes. So they've got monitoring sites uh, across New South Wales, so around parks here, the actual pathogen in the trial there, so the black, black uh, the, the one there is really taking out the group B varieties and S is the issue there. So what you can do is you can rotate your varieties to keep in front of the, the pathogen, is, is what you can do there. There's actually information uh, on the GRDC website on um, all this. So turning in terms of, of black leg, group A, B, and for you guys around here, S is an issue. They were worried about the group D um, resistance breaking down there in 2013, but that seems to have gone. But it's still about, we've got that intensified canola production, more inoculum, harder to get that 500 metres deep separation. But it's still all about weather events. It's only on one variety, but looking at fungicide options. Uh, nil control here, so this is the amount of that internal tissue damage. Remember I said above 50% we're getting significant yield loss. So uncontrolled here, we put it, use a jockey, so fluconazole as a C treatment, we drop that down to blow damaged metals. Impact, which is flutriophile on starter fertilizer. Certainly brings it down, so it's all, remember, it's all about that early infection up to that five lease stage. Prozara applied here was at, um, I looked it up, it was applied at the five lease stage. Limited impact because they've already initiated the stem uh, cankers. Combine the two, you're getting a better impact. Okay, so all about that early early control. When you read read the literature, it's all about a Prozara or an impact is really going to get you out of the trouble, prevent that early infection if you've got a susceptible variety. This can be hard to achieve, depending on how much canola you've got in the system, but that was certainly limited. Match your varieties to the resistance, so keep it on top of that information that's coming out. Very effective, this uh, early control. If you're going to spray later, so they, they, the information, if you, you've still got it developing, then a green bud spray is the second. Uh, so the two times if you're going to spray in crop, is at the six leaf stage and then a green bug spray that still keep going. Sclerotinin issue. Sclerotinin on issue, we'll scab on skip sclerotinia. Anyway, if you are interested in sclerotinia, heaps of information on canola, GRDC website, uh, get Nick uh, to go and look it up for you and send it them around. They're a bit hard to find on their actual site. Um, but yeah, plenty of detailed information of, of how to manage those. Last couple of slides, anyone interested in favour beans? No, no. 
even less than canola, about five days. <laughs> I can punch you in the right direction.